Hi, I'm recording this video for my GCSE electronics students preparing for the mock exam. We're going to have a look at question 6 from the 2019 component 1 paper. If you still have any questions about this, answering this, do have a look at chapter 4, switching circuits. OK, so transistor being used as a switch, turn the motor on and off, we've got this freewheeling or protection diode there. A resistor limiting the current into the base. Uh, the motor operates at 9 volts, 500 milliamps, calculate the power. Well. Because we uh, have those two quantities, should be easy to do. Uh, you need to remember this formula, power equals VI. So the voltage, 9 volts. The current is 500 milliamps. I'm just going to write that as 0 0.5 amps. So that's 4.5. And power is measured in watts. So make sure you write W there, capital W. And then that's your answer, okay? Amazingly, that's worth three marks. If you prefer, you could write uh, 9 volts times 500, because I did say 500, 500 times 10 to the minus 3. But that's still going to give you 4.5 watts, okay? If you wanted to do that on the calculator for any reason, I'll just quickly show you how. So you can do 9 times 500 times 10 to the minus 3. And it gives you, well, that, OK, fraction, and then 4.5. Right. The transistor has a current gain of 200. Now, the current gain, or HFE, let's just write the formula for that. Current gain, H sub FE, is the relationship between the collector current and the base current. So, for example, if your collector current is 10 times greater than your base current, then you have a gain of Ten. All right. Well, they say that there's a gain of or a relationship between those two quantities of 200. So the collector current is going to be 200 times bigger than the base current when the transistor is just saturated. Not sure about that. Just saturated thing. Just have a look at the uh, chapter four notes. So what do we know so far? Well, we know the collector current. This is the collector current. Remember, that's a collector. That's the emitter. That's the base. So. This 500 milliamps here, that is the uh, collector current. The base current is that one. Normally we don't talk about the emitter current. So collector current. Uh, we know the collector current. We want to calculate the base current. So we need to rearrange this formula. So I'm going to do that now. So IB, the collector current, is going to be equal to the color. The base current is going to be equal to the collector current over the uh, transistor gain, HFE, and so uh, we've got 500 milliamps, and the gain was uh, 200, and so, well, we can just cancel that out, can't we? 5 divided by 2, so 2.5 milliamps. There's your answer, okay? Um, if you don't like doing the cancelling, if you just want to type it all into the calculator for whatever reason, you could just do that at 500 times 10 to the uh, minus 3 and put that over 200 and 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3, which is milli. Okay. Uh, voltage across the 1.2k resistor. Well, before we do that, let's just annotate our circuit diagram, 2.5 milliamps, because we now know the base current, which is 2.5 milliamps. It's always a really good idea to annotate like this. And so we now want to calculate the voltage across the resistor. Not that voltage. We want to calculate this voltage. I'll call that the resistor voltage there. Okay. So we need to calculate that. Well, we know the current that's flowing through it. Remember, the same current, 2.5 milliamps, is going to be coming along here, bringing its way in, uh, into the base. And we know the resistance. Because we know the current and the resistance, we should be able to calculate the voltage. So the voltage, V, uh, in fact, if you're not sure about this, V, I and R, Ohm's law. OK, so we want to calculate voltage, so V equals I, R. V equals I R. Uh, the current, which was 2.5, uh, so 2.5, uh, let's just write it as milliamps for the moment, and then that's going to be times the resistance, which was 1.2 kilo ohms, 
1.2 uh, kilo ohms. Now if you wanted to you could have written that as 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1.2 times 10 to the 3. Hopefully you'll see that if you've got thousandths times thousands you can cancel them out. So you could cancel those two bits out. So really it's only 2.5 times 1.2. Two point five times uh, one point two gives you three. Remember volts, so three volts. Always circle circle your answer. So you know we should hopefully we got four there and we've got one mark there. Bit of disparity, isn't there, in the number of marks? But anyway, uh, and then the value of V in now. So we said this is three volts dropped across here. The V in is not 3 volts, don't confuse that, because not only are you dropping 3 here, you're also dropping across the base emitter, that's VBE. The base emitter junction, you're going to be dropping about 0 0.7 volts. Okay, that's an approximation, but it's, it's good enough. So typical, uh, if you remember the typical voltage drop across a a silicon diode is uh, 0.7 volts, so that's where we get the 0.7 volts from. So we're now going to be dropping 3 plus the 0.7 volts. So V in is going to be equal to the voltage dropped across that uh, resistor um, plus the voltage dropped across the base emitter junction. And so that's going to be uh, 3 plus 0.7, so 3 volts plus 0.7 volts equals 3.7 volts. Circle your answer. Okay, that's it. Like I said earlier, if uh, you get stuck on those things, do look back at chapter 4 switching circuits. And of course, if you're one of my students, you can ask me a question or you can just post a comment in this video. That's it. Hope that's useful.